Yo, what is going on? You're checking out Qted HQ. My name is Chris and welcome back to the channel. Today we're checking out my more minimal desk setup tour that's sitting right behind me. Uh, before we get into that, I really want to thank all of the new subscribers and the old subscribers uh, for the love that I'm getting on my main desk setup tour. Uh, it's astronomical, all the kind words you guys are giving me. Um, I'm having a blast and I really hope you guys are as well and I'm glad you're enjoying the content. Okay, so all that being said, let's go ahead and break down my minimal desk setup tour for 2023. This more minimal desk build is also custom, just like my main desk setup, but way less extensive. If you haven't seen that video, be sure to check it out. The legs of this desk are sit-stand legs from the company Solos IT. About a year or so ago, I reviewed their sit-stand desk, and though it was a very solid desk, it just wasn't large enough for the studio space. So I removed the desktop, I extended the legs to the maximum width, and I added this for mica laminated top that I had custom made. It was cut and created the same time that I had my main desk build done, so the white marble swirl colorway is identical to my main desk setup and everything matches the studio perfectly. I also mounted the solo sit stand control panel under the right side of the desk, and I utilized this by pre-saving desk heights or just raise and lower the desk to my everyday needs. Now for lighting, I kept it simple. I just added a 16 foot Gobi light strip. These light strips really come in clutch as you're able to cut them down to length if they're too long for what you need, and they're really easy to integrate into your Amazon or Google voice control devices. Though this is an RGB strip that can change multiple colors, I usually just leave it on the static white for a nice underglow. Now the chair I chose for this desk is a super simple one. This is the RealSpace Adley Mesh low back chair in the gray and white colorway. Super cheap, I believe this was like under $70. It offers a decent amount of cushion, though I would not recommend it for long-term use. I use this second setup mainly for testing products, grabbing some extra product shots, and it fills in for a great second gaming station for when a friend stops by. So I really was just looking for a nice colored chair to match my studio setup that wasn't too large and easy to tuck away, and this chair checks all those boxes. The bottom left is where you'll find my PC. Now I used some extra wood that I had lying around to make this small stool that I just painted white, as this helps raise my PC off of the carpet, and it allows me to access the PC with a little bit more ease. Sitting inside the stool is where I place one of my RGB floodlights that I use to help light up my main desk bookshelf and some other statues that sit across from it. So on to the PC itself. This was a fun build as it was my first ever mini ITX build. My friends helped me throw this together for my official review of this case. If you want to see that full build video, it should be linked in the cards or the video description. Now the case is the Iconix ZX1 aluminum mini ITX case. This case is sold in many other colorways and it's just so aesthetically pleasing. Believe it or not, it was not that hard to work in. I went for the white case here with the orange coral top, and inside this small case, I won't go into too much detail, but it rocks an Intel Core i7-10700K CPU, 16 gigabytes of Crucial Ballistics RAM clocked at 3200 MHz, the Asus ROG Strix Z490i gaming motherboard, and an EVGA GeForce RTX 3060 GPU. So again, this is much more than I really need for this setup, but when it comes to testing most products, it just hits all those boxes as well. And these components also make for a decent little gaming station. I think most people would benefit from this, whether it be gaming or just everyday work. On the top, in between my display shelves, I just added two IKEA LAC shelves to tie everything together. On top of that, I have a few cranky spray can pieces to one of my favorite artists known as Sket One. Besides them, I have two LaFlame Kid Robot Dunnies by Junko Mizuno. Lighting those figures, I again added another 16 foot of Gobi's RGB light strip that I wrapped around the entire shelf to not just illuminate the art figures, but to also give some glow up into the back wall. Now, I usually set this color to match whichever color I got going on my main setup, and right now, purple and blue seem to be the vibe. Now for the backsplash. I could have just went with another set of wall panels like I have in my main setup, but I don't know, I just really wanted this to be different. And though this might look simple, it was for sure a task and a half. I went for this teardrop slot wall look in a two-tone black and metallic silver colorway, and I also added some custom lighting to this. Now I can give you guys a full DIY on this in a future before and after studio build if that's something that you guys are interested in. But for a simple explanation, I basically cut multiple pieces of wood into different sizes, spliced and routed these warm LED Christmas lights through the backside, I framed them onto a black backdrop, and I kind of hung it up like a big piece of artwork. Now I have it plugged into an Amazon smart plug so I can turn this on and off with voice control. And yes, I could easily access and change these LEDs if I want to, if one was to fail in the future, I already kind of future-proof that. I could just easily take this off like a big picture frame and I could just pop off one of those lights and put a new one in. It sort of reminds me of like city buildings lit up at night. I don't know, I really like the way it turned out. 
It for sure is different, and I think it's pretty cool. My bookshelf speakers are the Edifier R1280dBs. Now, for the price of these speakers, you really can't beat them right now. These deliver crisp vocals and have deep bass to them. They're one of Edifier's newer speakers in their lineup, and they're sold in either a wood grain or the all black that I have here today. The all black with the silver line in the middle just really matched my backdrop perfectly. I cannot get enough of these speakers. Whether I listen to music from the PC itself or seamlessly swapping from Bluetooth on my iPhone or iPad, these speakers really deliver. On top of my left speaker, I have the Black and Bronze Tweety Bird by Mark Dean Vecca, the Limited Black and White Anatomical Rubber Ducky by Jason Freeney, and just a little red Cambot by CZ. Now, this is my Lemetric clock. This clock is definitely a little pricey, but it's pretty cool. It could display not only the time, it could display weather, music, as well as deliver live notification updates on things like subscriber count, Twitch count, and other social media all in real time. It's nicely displayed in this cool retro pixel font, all linked through the free Lemetric app. You could even change notification sounds and display directions. I think it would make for a really cool add-on to anyone's setup. Over by the right speaker, I have two limited edition new money dunnies by Tristan Eaton that I absolutely love. And on top of the speaker sits the Sank the Shape Block Sunrise piece, which I think is absolutely gorgeous. This little gadget here is the Davoom Ditto Plus. This is a retro pixel art Bluetooth speaker that you could also use as an alarm clock if you like, but it mainly acts like a fidget toy. It's got a few clicky mechanical switches and a little lever here. And you could add all types of pixel art to this as well. And it complements my Lemetric clock since they are both pixelated images. It comes in a bunch of other colorways if you like. And last I checked, it was priced somewhere under $100. The current desk pad is the Baseball Warrior from Mech & Company. Now I feature the black and white monochrome version on my main setup, so I just had to add the full color version of this setup. I just really love the overall vibrancy and artwork on these desk pads. They're super soft and have amazing glide to them. So the mouse I'm rocking on this setup is the Final Mouse Starlight 12 Phantom in medium. I was a huge fan of the original Ultralight Phantom back in the day, so I just had to have this mouse. Magnesium shell, super accurate and responsive with insane battery life, that throwback to the original space theme on the OG Phantom, anyone who just games in this PC seems to agree this is a solid mouse. Now my keyboard is a custom build. This is the Ramaworks Zenith in the Kuro colorway, equipped with a brass plate, a gasket mounted build, and a hot swap PCB. Now I paired this with the ever so popular Gatoron ink switches. So the keycap set of choice here is the GMK Ishtar, with the brass Ishtar Artisan by Rama to match. Now this board is up there in price, like really bad but it hands down is one of the best boards that I've created and used and I love it. Now to the left, I have my wow stick. This is an electric drill bit with a little flashlight built in. And next to it, I have this little container holding my most popular used bits. This comes in clutch all the time, especially when I'm modding or building keyboards or just tinkering with smaller PC components. The mic I have set up here right now is the Samsung Meteor mic. This is a super inexpensive condenser microphone that just comes in handy and it's been around for a while. You can mount this or use the intended legs and angle it to any position, as well as fold it up for quick storage or travel. Now my headset here is the Alienware 510H gaming headset. Now this is a really sharp looking gaming headset and the black and white just matches the studio perfectly. 7.1 surround sound with custom tuned 50 millimeter high res drivers, a lightweight construction with hybrid memory foam, which delivers plenty of cushion around your ears. And this headset also has a retractable microphone, which I love because you can just tuck it away when not in use. Finally, my monitor. This is the Gigabyte 1440p 144Hz Ultra Wide Gaming Monitor. This is a curved display and it's massive, coming in at 34 inches. Now, this is super vibrant and the colors on this just really hit. It has a one millisecond response time that really helped deliver when it comes to high end gaming. And I chose this monitor because the price is so good for what you're actually getting and the size of this panel as well. It's not only great for gaming, but it's great for any type of quick work that's got to be done without having the need of a second monitor. Like I mentioned earlier, I expect a lot of things on this desk to change as they basically use this desk as like a giant test bench for parts I'm reviewing or just testing out. So that was my more minimal desk setup tour here for 2023. Kind of a mix of gaming and just everyday use. Uh, I really hope a lot of you guys out there enjoyed it. So if you are new here, please consider subscribing. I want to grow this community bigger and better together. Uh, I really, again, I love all of the support and love of me getting on my last desk tour video. You guys are absolutely amazing. All the newcomers and the original subscribers Honestly, you guys are just the best. So with all that being said, uh, any questions, obviously down below in the comments and uh, be sure to keep your eyes out for the full studio tour and a bunch of giveaways that are coming here in the near future. All right, guys, most importantly, y'all stay safe out there. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.